Hi friend, it's Ron from cammastery.com where you can go to learn how to make great videos with Camtasia. This is a free lesson Friday, which means you get a free lesson right from my Camtasia Mastery course. If you want to get the entire course, you can head over to cammastery.com slash store and pick up that course. Now onto the video. So we went to share and local file and we see that it came up with custom production settings by default. I'll go onto the next screen and here we can see the file types that are available for us for production. You can see the recommended one is MP4, and that's the one that I choose. It's the one that I use almost exclusively. So now going on to the next screen, after we've chosen MP4, we see that we have all these different tabs at the top. For now, let's just skip past this and go on to the next screen. And here we have video options. The first thing we see here are what kind of options do we want to put with the file itself? So there is something called metadata, which describes the file. For example, if you save a Word file, it knows who the author of that Word file was. Well, similarly, when we save an MP4, we can know the author as well as other information. So what you might choose to do if you're, if you're hosting this on the web is to go to options and say, well, here's the title of my video, here's the subject, the category, if it's like educational, the date that you created it, and all this other information, as well as author information, and then if you were uploading it to iTunes, you could put in iTunes information as well. Now, I don't choose to fill this out. It's not something that's important to me, but for some people this might be very important that if somebody's looking for or searching for your video, that they have the related information, they have like the subject or the category in order for them to find your video easier. So if you are hosting this maybe in a local corporate site, then that might be a good reason to put this content in here. For me, I choose just to leave this alone. I don't often go to video info. What I have used in the past is a watermark. And so what you can do is you can say, I want to add a watermark. I don't usually use a watermark, but I know a lot of people who use it if they're working on a draft video, for example, and they have this proof that they want to send to a client, they'll watermark it to protect it so the client doesn't steal it from them. But for most videos, you won't need to use this. But if you do want to use it for branding or to try and deter piracy, then this is one way you can do it. So what I could do is I could go to options and I could first find that logo. Right now, it's going to use the Camtasia logo and I'm fine using that for this example, but I would typically want to go and search for my personal logo. There are some effects that you can do. I'll click emboss and you can see the preview here. It makes it look like it's jumping off the page or at least it tries to. Some logos look better embossed, others do not. I don't choose to use emboss, I don't really like that. Use transparent color allows you to pick some color that it can see through. Like I might want it to be able to see through any of the white. And so I can say yes, that color of white, anytime you see that, um, make sure that you can see whatever's behind the video. Again, I don't typically use that. Opacity, remember, is how opaque the item is. If I have an opacity of 100%, then nothing, no light is going through it. I can't see through it at all. 50% will let me see through it halfway, and an opacity of 0% is completely transparent. All light is passing through it, and typically I don't want that. For a watermark, you want to keep your opacity, usually in the lower end, um, somewhere between 25 and 50% is a good place to put that opacity. For scaling your watermark, preserving the image size makes it exactly that size as opposed to making it smaller or resized for your screen. You should always keep the aspect ratio so that it doesn't get stretched out either vertically or horizontally. And then smooth scaling allows it to reduce its size and still look like it's a high quality image. So you'll always want to leave that checked as well. Now the image scale, you can see it's here at 20%. If I wanted to, I could go much larger. I could say, let's go up to 100%, or I could go down and make it even smaller than 20. I can make it 15% if I need it smaller. So you can decide how large you want it. So I'll choose 25 for now. Where do you want it in your video? Most of the time we're going to have it either in the lower left or the lower right. It comes up with lower right by default. That's okay. If you're hosting it to YouTube, YouTube puts its watermark in the lower right. So I tend to prefer a lower left for my videos. And then how far away from the edges do you want this to be? Do you want it to be further off to the right or higher up? You can choose that. So it comes up with 5% for each of those by default, and that's usually fine. I don't usually change that. So I'll click OK, and now my watermark will be set for this video. 
If I was doing a batch video production, I could have this on all of my videos.